Hey everyone, Nick with CC Minis, and today I'm going to introduce you to a new type of paint I've been using on my Warhammer, Age of Sigmar, 40k, and Dungeons and Dragons miniatures. That paint being gouache. Well, I guess and watercolors, but we'll, we'll get to that later. And not that acrylic gouache that you see on the uh, NJM videos. You know, like this stuff? Lovely stuff. But today we're talking about watercolor gouache. It's a little different. I used it to grim darkify. That's that's a word, right? This Imperial Fist Captain. Wash this chicken tank. Paint this piece of ruined terrain. And I used that alongside watercolor to completely paint this uh, Warcry Sphinx thingy. Sphir Sphinx? Anyway. So what is gouache? Gouache is a ground pigment that is suspended in medium. So like. Just paint? Well, I mean, yeah, but where acrylic paints use an acrylic medium and oil paints use an oil medium, gouache typically uses gum arabic or dextrum. These are the same binding agent that is used in watercolors and is what makes gouache so similar to watercolors. Gouache was invented around the same time watercolors were, but it's less well known for two reasons. It's got a silly, hard to spell name. It got kind of a bad reputation in the 18th century because it got its opaqueness from lead, which had a tendency to turn black over time. And it made all of its users go a little crazy. <laughs> Luckily, modern day gouache uses other pigments to gain its opacity. Okay, so the really, really cool thing about gouache and watercolors for that matter, is that after it dries, it's not permanent. You can use water to reactivate it, just like reactivating oil paints with mineral spirits, or white spirits. I mean, whatever you call it where you live. I think turpentines is the right word for some folk. In the US it's called mineral spirits because of the rocks we have to sacrifice to make it, but they know what they did. Even if your palette dries completely, you can just add some water, mix it around, and the paint is good as new. I don't recommend using a wet palette with this stuff, or even one of those little well palettes. Get one of uh, one of these. It's got these little tiny wells up in the front and a nice wide area for you to mix paints. So why should we all start using gouache for our models? Well, that's a great question, adoring fans, but I'm gonna ignore it. Instead, I'm gonna show you how to use them. I think you'll start to get the why along the way. All right, let's, let's see what these are about. Take this chicken tank, for example, and I know what you're thinking. That looks like a 3D printed tank that was primed with a terribly sloppy coat of gesso. But no, you see, I've tricked you. This is a blue chicken tank. Hmm? Don't believe me? Okay, I'll show you. With just a bit of water on a Q-tip, and some elbow grease. Ah, there we have it. This paint comes right off. No matter how thick or opaque of a coat you lay down, all you need to do is reactivate the paint with water and you can remove it. Check this out. If you run this paint under the water of a sink with just a slight bit of agitation, the paint will come right off. Okay, Nick, that's, that's cool and all, but when would we ever want to leave white in the recesses like this? Fine, fine, fine. Let's, let's see if we can do a more realistic scenario. So, I repainted the chicken tank. I did a bit of a dull aluminum out of an airbrush, then painted some jade on the body and head turret things. But now let's hit it with a nice mix of gouache. I added in a bit of black, umber, purple, and whatever this one was to the mix. I felt like this gave me a nice brown with some purple notes in there. Anyway, looks messed up, right? That's okay, this is, this is all part of the process. Let's get to prettifying this again. Q-tip. Water. Hmm. That's looking nice. I love how this leaves a nice deep shadow in the recesses. But to be frank, this particular one is looking a little too dark for me. So let's do another coat of maybe... Maybe a brown on top. First, I'm going to give this a nice matte varnish, which basically locks that layer in place. If you don't, you can actually start to affect the layers that you've already put down when you put a new layer on top because the paint is reactivated with water. Which can be helpful, but not really what we're trying to do right now. Okay, that layer is dry. Let's take some paint off. Ooh, very nice. I finished this model by putting it on one of my Simple Desert bases. Uh, video is in the corner and I added some orange pigment. I made this stuff out of a 
chalk pastel. You don't need any fancy dry weathering pigments. I'm gonna make a video on this soon, by the way. Um, yeah, it's fun stuff. By the way, I put a, uh, a link to the chicken tank STL in the description. I, I didn't make it or anything, I just thought it was pretty neat. I mean, look at this guy. It's adorable. So I did a similar wash process on my Imperial Fist to uh, Grim Darkify it. I uh, made a nice brown concoction, slathered it on, let it dry, wiped it off. Ooh. And I'll have a video on that too. So this looks like it'd be really nice for terrain, right? Yep. Yep, it is. Watch this. I started with a flat, sad, boring, drab, lame, uninspiring, gray piece of terrain. Slapped a nice thick mixture of gouache on there where I added in some greens and browns and blues. Yeah, a whole smattering of colors, really. This gave it some nice tonal variation, and since it was all wet, it mixed together real well on the piece. I had patience and let the terrain dry completely naturally. Then remove some gouache with a Q-tip. This was really easy, and the texture of the terrain was perfect for the Q-tip to grab up some paint and give it some nice highlights. Okay, that's pretty cool, but what's it like painting a whole model with this stuff? Well, it was fun, pretty interesting, weird, and I cheated a little bit, but let's get into it first. I'll show you. So I'm painting up this mind stealer spharynx. I'm painting up this Mind Stealer Sphinx, which I put some wings on it that I got at an old bits trade a while back. I want there to be like a like a grayish purplish body with super super colorful wings. So I started out with a very loose underpainting using a lot of gray. I mixed some black and white gouache to do this and slowly worked the underpainting. Adding in some blues, teals, and browns into the shadows. This will add a lot of uh, nice tonal variation for the final piece. And it let me build up some darker values. When I wanted to start doing highlights, I added in a bit of white onto my brush and worked that in. I use that phrase intentionally, by the way. Worked it in. Since my brush is wet with paint, when I put down the highlights, it will reactivate a bit of paint that is already on the model. When this happens, the highlights will blend in a bit better. It's actually kind of a bit like wet blending even though the previous layer is already completely dry. This is a great time to mention that even more so than with acrylics, this paint requires a lot of attention to be paid to its consistency. It is very easy to overwet your brush and flood the model, which can potentially reactivate and ruin what you have already laid down. On the flip side, if you don't have enough water, the paint will get too thick and you'll start seeing some brush strokes and little ridges. Since I was so used to acrylic consistency, I did make some mistakes while painting this, but that's okay. With gouache, nothing is permanent. Acrylics tend to be a bit thicker, so even with a relatively thick gouache, it may feel too thin. But you'll get used to the differences quickly. Don't don't let this deter you from giving this a try. It's it's really fun. All right. I'm happy with the underpainting and don't want to mess it up with future quotes, so I did a nice coat of matte varnish to lock down the underpainting. This layer will form a seal protecting the previous layers from being reactivated by water moving forward. Next I decided to bring out Gouache's fancy ritzy cousin, watercolor. Like I mentioned before in our little history lesson at the beginning of the class, gouache and watercolors use the same medium, but these are much, much more transparent. Hey, they even have a nice little chart here on the lid that shows how transparent they are. Isn't that nice? Let's go for a fully transparent color, which will let the underpainting show through. This purple looks perfect. I'll thin the purple quite a bit down and apply it as it glaze all over the body of the Sphinx. When watering it down, this then be sure to dab the excess paint off the brush on a paper towel. If you don't, you might flood the model, potentially reactivating the paint below. I tried to make the purple more saturated at the ends of the limbs, as well as this fluffy little mane it's got. I used a higher water to paint ratio on the body to keep it a bit more on the desaturated side. I felt like this looked pretty good, but I wanted to add in some highlights. So I used a bit of white gouache mixed in with that purple and hit the edges and the tops of all these little forms on the model. 
But then I uh, cheated a little bit and used white acrylic in a makeup brush to hit basically the whole model with a soft dry brush of pure white. At this point, I sealed the model again with some more matte varnish. Okay, so what should we do for these little armor bits on the legs and chest? How about a uh, turquoisey deep blue? I'll start with some of the same blue-green that we were adding in during the underpainting. And while that dries, I, I went over the model again with the same thinned down purple. I found it was much easier to build up darker shadows with multiple thin coats as opposed to trying to get any sort of thick coat with watercolors. Thick coats just don't work too well with them. Then I hit all the nails and teeth with a bit of this goldenrod color and hit the trim of the armor with it too. Next, I added in a bit of black mixed with teal to add in some deeper shadows to the armor bits. At this point, I felt like I was starting to pull up more paint than I could lay down on the armor bits, so it was time to hit everything with another coat of matte varnish, locking my work into place. I like that teal color a lot, so let's do the wings in that color too. Alright, these are going to look pretty sick. Once the wings were dry, I pulled out some more q-tips and started to remove some of that teal watercolor. This works like the gouache washes from earlier. Gouache washes. Gouache. Gouache washes. That's hard. That's just tongue twister. Give that a try. Gouache washes. I think it looks great, but I wanted to push the feather contrast a bit more. So I brought out a wet brush, which allowed me to remove the teal a bit more aggressively allowing me to get closer to that initial white coat. Okay, these wings are close, but not quite there yet. I'm gonna get some pure white on the edges. So again, I cheated and did a dry brush of acrylic white. This pushed the contrast even further. All right, this is, this is looking pretty awesome. I love that green color, and the process we just did on the wings brought out some great detail on the feathers. And it was at this point I made a grave mistake. I brought something into my home that is not easily removed. A demon of never-ending splendor. Glitter! Okay, this is silly, but I always wanted to try doing glitter on a model, so uh, we're, we're doing it. I mixed together the glitter with a bit of matte varnish, getting it everywhere in the process. I then gave the horns a nice coat of the stuff. and tried to shove it into the recesses of the wings. Oh, and these little oval gem things too. Mm, sparkly. Well, uh, I'm not super happy with the silver glitter look on the horns. Let's, let's see if we can make these gold instead. Luckily, there's a watercolor called Golden. And yeah, that that's working even better than I expected. It's a it's a really solid gold color, and since it's translucent, the sparkles actually get to show through. Very cool. I did some recess shading with pure sienna watercolors as well. This did a great job of outlining the little ridges of the horn. Then I did some highlighting with chrome from Vallejo Model Air. I know, I know, it's it's cheating, but like there aren't any metallic watercolors or gouaches, so whatever. All right, I think it's about time to stick her on her base, isn't it? After sticking her on the base, I did a coat of red on those little gem thingies, and I thought it was time to call it a day. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you uh, hope you learned something new. I really hope you give this this medium a try. It's it's really fun, and I think that the uh, the gouache washes could really replace a lot of the um, the oil washes that people do, which, I mean, they smell bad. It's gross. If you really like the videos, or me, you can share these with your friends. Um, that'll help grow the channel. Getting my vaccine soon, by the way, which is cool. You should definitely do that too whenever you can in your area. Um, stay healthy, take care, all that good stuff. I'll see you next time.